All right, on the special edition of IndigoMusic.com, I'm joined by one of the most reputed sports journalists of the country, Mr. Gaurav Kalra. Gaurav, absolute pleasure having you here with us on IndigoMusic.com. Thank you, Rohit. And uh, I would prefer not the, the to not add the Mr. in front of it. That's All right. uh, preferable for slightly older people. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> now, Gaurav, now, you know, uh, my, uh, you know, let's start off with this thing. Typically in India, a lot of their parents want their kids to be engineers and to be doctors. I myself am an engineer, but I have chosen, uh, you know, my path to be a radio jockey. Now, yes. uh, there seems to be a, a change also when it comes to sports. A lot of parents are encouraging their kids to get into sports. Is there a change that you have seen probably from a decade to now? Oh, yes, definitely, Rohit. And I think that uh, parents are now seeing increasingly that sport is a viable career. Earlier, of course, uh, the only way you had a viable career in sport was if you made it to the national cricket team. And right. literally, that's that was the be-all and end-all of that. And only about 15 players at one time can call themselves national cricketers. However, that has completely changed now. There's professionalism across the board. And you're seeing among some of the most uh, successful athletes financially are non-cricketers in the likes of uh, PV Sindhu, uh, Saina Nehwal, Sanya Mirza. Uh, uh, athletes of this kind. So there's a there's a complete paradigm uh, uh, shift in mindset when it comes to the way parents look at uh, sport for their kids. Right now, uh, also uh, there has also like you were mentioning that from cricket, there has been a shift. Now there's also been a very big shift according to me uh, uh, when it comes to uh, motorsports and racing. A lot of people are, you know, getting into Dakar Rally beat, uh, you know, Arvind KP or CS Santosh and also off late Jihan Daruwala who, uh, you know, is doing wonders yes. in Formula 2. Now, is there a push that we can expect in the near future when it comes to motorsports? I think so. I, I think, uh, you know, a few years ago, Rohit, I remember uh, attending the Formula 1 race in India here and, you know, it was quite an enjoyable experience. Also, back in the day when I was starting out as a sports journalist, uh, there was Naren Karthikeyan, yes. who was uh, uh, who was uh, who also competed on the Formula One circuit. There was a very active rally circuit, uh, you know, where rallies were held across the country. So, motorsports always been a, a, has a uh, been a fairly large community here in India. And now, as uh, the economy grows, this is directly linked to the economy, and there's a more disposable income. And of course, uh, uh, it's uh, essentially first a hobby sport and then it goes on into uh, the professional realm. So I see no reason why it doesn't grow in the future. Hopefully, we get the Formula One race back in India soon. Right. I, I mean, yes, it is an expensive sport. So obviously, what you said absolutely made sense. Now, which is your favorite sport and why? So I, I think I grew up uh, watching a lot of uh, cricket. I think it's very common uh, for anyone to uh, uh, you know to kind of say that uh, tennis was my real favorite sport though i have very vivid memories uh, the first time i remember watching a tennis final was the 85 wimbledon final where a 17 year old boris becker won yeah. and that became a very very uh, uh, that became a real attraction and since then i've been completely uh, sort of if you like devoted to tennis as my number one sport i really enjoy watching it following it uh, and i've been lucky enough to have seen it a little bit around the world the other sport that I really enjoy are all the Olympic sports, uh, athletics, badminton, of right. course, uh, uh, you know, uh, and uh, uh, archery, shooting, things of this nature. So, uh, yeah, I have a, uh, I have a widespread interest in sports, if you like. Fantastic. Now, uh, who is your favorite sports person? And, uh, you know, are you biased in when it comes to uh, your stories about that person? So oh, uh, that's a good question. I mean, growing up, my favorite sports person was Steffi Graf, without a okay. question. You know, uh, I, it was, I, I was. It's so nice to hear that because my mother's favorite uh, sports person is Steffi Graf. She loves her. But okay, yeah, so you've yeah, uh, yeah, please, you've yeah, given yeah, me a yeah. you've given me a generational shift as well. Yeah, I'm but sorry, yeah, but, I, mean, no, I mean, it's <laughs> uh, when we went to a, uh, uh, this place in uh, Germany called Heidelberg. Uh, she is from Heidelberg. My mother felt like she didn't see anything. She wanted to see where Steffi Graf's house. So it was she's that big of a fan of Steffi Graf. So I'm sorry yes. that so, I put the generation <laughs> thing in it, but yeah, no, 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 no problem at all. And I, I grew up uh, being an absolute admirer of uh, Steffi Graf, not just uh, of her achievements, but a style of play. You know, and when you're growing up, it leaves a very deep impression on you. When a sports person actually plays in a certain manner, she had this booming forehand 
beautiful rhythmic backhand great movements on court like a sublime athlete and seemed to just get on with it and and play her sport very little fuss around it never through tantrums so it was almost like she was the perfect role model in a sense of the kind of sports person you enjoy watching when one becomes a sports journalist roy this is a very important question you know you navigate two worlds you are essentially a sports fan yes Yeah. but then you become a sports journalist where you've got to almost create this distance between you and the sports people you admire and often be open to be critical of them and analyze them in a in a distant manner if you can so i always uh, i took that as a as a professional life lesson and stuck by it throughout my journalistic career right now let me put you on a spot have you ever written anything bad about steffi graf No, I haven't written anything bad about Steffi Graf, but then I think the advantage was that I was not covering Steffi Graf as uh, an Indian journalist would cover an Indian sports person. Right. And also, by the time I became a sports journalist, she had retired and moved on. So thankfully, I never had to write a critical piece about Steffi Graf. <laughs> well, and that worked out well for you. And uh, now, uh, according to you, which is the most controversial sporting moment? Yeah. Oh there have been so many uh, you know Rohit uh, but the one that I remember being involved very closely in was the entire monkey gate episode in 2007-8 in Australia right. uh, which uh, was a series that I covered from the ground it was a long series and I remember the entire controversy in a lot of detail because it involved various elements such as uh, racism such as uh, diplomatic relations between the countries such as the uh, relationships between the players really reaching a low point and how explosive that entire situation was so that is one controversy that uh, i remember being right in the center of right now you've uh, been to a lot of sporting venues all around the world which is the yeah. most fun venue according to you the most fun venue uh, yeah. i enjoy i enjoy, i really enjoyed watching cricket in the west indies i thought uh, it brought a different color and uh, um, uh, and sort of enjoyment uh to the entire exercise every time in the middle of overs the dj would start playing music and you would kind of get involved in that almost carnival like atmosphere i really enjoyed being at the australian open tennis which i thought was an extremely well organized but a very fun event you almost felt like you were part of uh, the occasion and part of the tennis but the one event that i really uh, kind of relish having had the opportunity to be around was the olympic games in rio de janeiro in 2016 because you could sense uh, that you were part of something extremely special and enjoyable there was a brazilian flavor to that entire uh, to that entire fortnight right fantastic now uh, do you think there's a paradigm shift in sports promotions in india like new facilities and also the authorities are encouraging right so uh, we have also had the largest uh, contingent of uh, athletes last year who uh, went to the olympics now are there good times ahead for us you know athletes in india i definitely think things have changed and changed for the better of course there's a lot more that needs to be done before india becomes a sporting superpower but there has been interest from uh, you know corporate india has been quite supportive but the government's been very supportive as well it's that the target olympic podium scheme is essentially a, a funnel of uh, funding that becomes available to all our elite sports people as they prepare for uh, you know big ticket games asian games commonwealth games which are this year and then of course uh, the olympics and the results are starting to show like you said the highest ever medal haul at the tokyo olympics uh, last year in, uh, in and uh, including a gold medal and one can only hope that uh, that was the stepping stone or the sort of uh, you know the ca- catapult from where india can start to do much better in uh, in different sporting disciplines but you can tell just by looking at performances of sports people day day in and day out from india that yeah. uh, they are making a real impression on the world stage right now is there any sports person you missed meeting maybe by a whisker or is there a, you know a sports person that is evading you i would have liked to meet mohammad ali oh, wow. uh, but i never could i never could meet uh, mohammad ali uh, that was a sports person that i would have genuinely enjoyed uh you know simply because as a journalist he was uh, just uh, you know to to interview a, a thinker and a philosopher almost of, of uh, that kind yeah. would have uh, would have been a very enriching experience so uh, that of course is uh, something that i really uh, really regret not having had the opportunity to do but uh, you know i think uh, i think when you work in this line of work you yeah. understand that you're not going to yeah. you're not going to in- interact with all of your heroes 
right and uh, the second part of the question is there someone evading you someone uh where, you know like they they'll run out of the press conference if they see you there nah no that hasn't happened uh, uh so far i uh, at least i don't think i've uh, done that to any sports person but yeah i uh, i think so far uh, in all these years i've managed to maintain a reasonably good relationship with whoever i've come right fantastic now do you play uh, any sport so uh, rohit one of the things i discovered very early it was a realization of sorts was that i had no talent to play sport really well i tried very hard right. uh, i tried to play cricket i tried to play tennis but uh, you know i think intrinsically i don't think i was athletic enough or my body was suited enough and i probably didn't want to put in the hard work as well so right. then i decided that i would do the next best thing which is be around find ways to be around sport where i can watch it without having to pay for it and uh, that's worked out quite well right Now uh let's talk about your favorite music. Uh what kind of music do you like to listen to? Um I have a, a wide range in music. I do enjoy listening to Hindi film music. I was an 80s kid so I enjoyed pop music from pop and rock music uh, from the 80s 90s so all of your Guns N' Roses, your wow. uh, uh your Bon Jovi's, your Brian Adams' uh, of the world and perhaps not as up to speed with uh, with the uh, modern day music when it comes to rock and pop music right. but uh, yes uh, uh, you know having grown up in that generation that that uh, music still resonates with me and when i'm out on my walks i try and look up for a dire straits track that i i can listen to or uh, or uh, something from def leppard and uh, you know things like that so yeah that's uh, that's the kind of music i've enjoyed and of course i think uh, i think uh, uh, if you grow up in north india as i did uh, yeah. uh hindi film music plays mm. a big big part in your life yeah absolutely uh goro once again it was an absolute pleasure having you here uh, with us on indigomusic.com thank you so much for making time and connecting with us please stay safe and uh keep smiling thank you so much rohit it was an absolute pleasure speaking to you